So the Prime is the most sold motherboard Asus has to offer and its oldest lineup as well. The chances are that um, you probably owned a Prime or used one in your building adventures and for good reasons. The Prime is agile, specializes quickly and is sturdy. Today we are reviewing the everlasting Prime Z690A from Asus, a canvas of a motherboard ready to be shaped under your expert fingers to become the most docile subject of your most secret tech desires. So the Prime is a foundational product. Its PCB design and layout is used on the top and even on the ROX Trick series. Its M.2 connector placements, the component spacing, everything comes from the Prime. In short, getting this motherboard wrong would be really problematic uh, for Asus and its entire motherboard lineup. Now, Starting with the obvious, we are dealing with a six layered ATX motherboard, exactly what you need to insulate PCIe signals and therefore safely operate PCIe 5.0 level bandwidths. Now, a little note on its overall aesthetics, which I do find a little bit more appealing than its previous iterations. There is less plastics and a brighter and more stylish RGB presence on its IO roofing. I also like the overall tech robot symbolism, very anime and less kitschy than seen on primes until now. CPU socket wise, our Prime board is powered by the brand new LGA 1700 CPU socket, supporting both 12th and 13th generation of Intel Core processors. There are 500 more connecting pins than seen on its predecessor, the LGA 1200, mainly motivated by both a more power-hungry Alder Lake processor and upgraded abilities through the introduction of DDR5 RAM and the brand new PCIe 5.0 standard. Talking of which, um, the brand new Alder Lake Intel processors introduce PCIe 5.0 standard, meaning that our prime motherboard is now juggling no less than three different PCIe standards. PCIe 3.0, which delivers one gigabyte per second per PCIe lane, PCIe 4.0, which doubles that, and now PCIe 5.0, which redoubles that to four gigabyte per second per PCIe lane. But do not get fooled, because despite being a bandwidth monster, we do not have yet PCIe 5.0 enabled components on the market, so, yeah, you're not gonna get any performance gain as it is of today compared to the PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboards and uh, for quite a bit of time. So it's great for future proofing, but more of a marketing stunt coming from Intel than anything else. VRM-wise, the Prime Z690A is experiencing a serious upgrade when compared to its Z590 variant. We are going from 800 amps to a much beefier 1020 amps, including 16 60 amps power stages organized in eight parallel phases dedicated to power your CPU. This is 960 amps just to juice your processor. On paper, it is impressive, but given the Alder Lake higher core count and its new power needs, it is not surprising or even that much. I mean, it will be more than enough to operate any of the 12th generation of Intel Core processors, but when it comes to overclocking, there are some limitations. I managed to stably overclock my i7-12700K at about 5 GHz, which is noticeably less than achieved on its more expensive sibling, the ROX Strix Z690F Gaming, or even its main competitor, the Z690 Hours Pro, which both could deliver either 5.1 or even 5.2 GHz. But it is still a thousand amps worth of power, so, so definitely a lot of heat. And the Prime Z690A shows an astonishingly cool VRM thanks to both a large amount of power stages, hence more area to spread the CPU power load, but also and mainly thanks to its upgraded VRM blocks, which are absolutely beyond its price range. We got this wavy, large and thick VRM blocks, which not only look much better than its predecessors, but provide a much greater radiating area. On the main block, the IO plastic cover has been partially replaced by an all aluminium IO roofing, again providing a much larger radiating surface. And on the side block we can observe several radiating winglets, all of which contribute to a higher rate of heat dissipation. Last but not least, both of our VRM benefits from the double contact design, which provides both chokes and power stages with thermopadded direct contact to the VRM blocks, again accelerating heat transition from components to radiating elements. Unsurprisingly, thermal results are absolutely great. With an overclocked i7 and a long-lasting, torturous 
photosynthetic stress test, temperatures stayed comfortably below 50 degrees Celsius, the hallmark of what should be a very stable and long-lasting motherboard. Obviously, a really good VRM, great VRM, but what really bothers me here is that the limits of your processor won't be totally reached. The VRM will give up before you get to that 99 overclocking percentile. Now, RAM-wise, obviously one of the big stars of this year release. The Prime Z690A can support up to 128GB of DDR5 RAM organized in a dual-channel configuration and clockable up to a conservative 6GHz. And what you need to know about DDR5 memory that it will deeply have an impact on the performances of your day-to-day -day computing, mainly because it provides twice the bandwidth of the DDR4 memory and far surpasses its clocking abilities. A far bigger incentive to upgrade uh, than the PCI 5.0 standard. Now, do note that DDR5 boards are not backward compatible to DDR4 memory since the memory sockets are different. So don't try installing your DDR4 memory on this board to the risk of damaging both your board and your RAM. Now, storage-wise, again, a sizable upgrade compared to the Z590-powered motherboard. We got four M.2 solid-state drive connectors, all of which can operate at PCI 4.0 standard instead of only one previously, obviously making PCI 4.0 mainstream on all Intel motherboards and providing no less than 64 gigabit per second worth of data swap for every M.2 solid state drive individually. As usual, M.2 SSDs do get really hot really quickly, especially at PCI 4 standard, but thankfully Asus did not skim on its cooling remedies. We have these two large, thick and thermopadded heat shields which do an amazing job at radiating excess heat away. They also show an unusual amount of finish, showing Asus greater care on its Prime series. Now, the CPU-linked M.2 solid-state drive is the only one equipped with a back thermal pad, which might not be just here for premium appeal. The fact that this M.2 solid-state drive is the only one having access to the CPU PCIe 5.0 lanes and the extra cooling care could hint at the support of a PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid-state drive with that, that transfer reaching no less than 128 gigabit per second. Last but not least, I am delighted, delighted to see that Asus has decided to equip all of its M.2 solid-state drive connectors with its very own screwless M.2 SSD locking mechanism, which only made its coming out a short year ago on its tough Z590 series. Overall, storage is now a first-class citizen on Asus motherboard and something which will directly impact your day-to-day -day computing as well. So definitely a large, big, fat storage kudos to Asus for this. Now, less noticeable and finally downsized, we got four SATA 3 plugs, all of which can dispense a slow bottlenecking yet reliable 6 gigabit per second worth of data. Finally, a first hint that the SATA uh, standard is being phased out after decades, decades of loyal services. Now, PCIe expansion wise, we got no less than five PCIe exports, two bachelors, a dual slot and two 16 slots, which comes with different speeds. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU has 16 PCIe lanes. Therefore, this is where you'd want your GPU for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. In addition, and for the first time ever, it operates at PCIe 5 standard, meaning it can swap up to 64 gigabytes per second, dwarfing the naked 16 slot, which operates only 4 lanes at PCIe 3 standard, meaning 4 gigabytes per second only. Obviously, a single GPU motherboard, which is totally expected out of prime motherboard, and to be totally honest, who can afford a second video card these days anyways? Now, the only real regret I have here is the absence of Asus new PCIe unlock mechanism that uh, we've reviewed on the Strix uh, Z690 Gaming F, which I have reviewed last weekend. You should be checking if you haven't done so yet. You know, it's a very affordable feature for Asus to add and, and a very simple way to open your PCIe slot without having to stab it with your screwdriver and, and, and scratch your PCB left and right. So definitely something I really, really, really do regret and hope that 
uh, this will be added on the next iteration of this motherboard. Now chipset wise, because that's mostly why we are here, we got Intel's first PCIe4 native supported chipset. It has more bandwidth, more lanes, more USBs than its predecessor, but most noticeably, the Z690 chipset manages to deliver PCIe4 standard bandwidth levels on a very cold 6 watt heat footprint. Half of what AMD managed to do and the reason why it had to equip most of its X570 motherboards with expensive and sometimes nosy chips and fans, or more recently with very large imposing and still expensive heat shields. In comparison, the Z690 heat shield is much smaller in area, costs less and does a great job at keeping the chipset below 45 degrees Celsius at all time, which is where you want it to be for a long lasting motherboard. In short, the Z690 chipset makes the PCIe 4.0 standard finally uh, more mature and affordable, which will make it more available as well on, on cheaper motherboards such as the Intel's B series. Now back IO-wise, first let me know the presence of a padded integrated backplate, always a plus. And starting from the left, we have our upgraded display port and HDMI outputs for our integrated graphics, four third generation USB plugs able to transfer data up to five gigabit per second, four 3.2 second generation USB plugs able to transfer data up to 10 gigabit per second, except this type C, which runs on a dual channel and can therefore spew up to 20 gigabit per second, earning its unofficial USB 4 naming. Very nice upgrade indeed. Next, we have our standard 2.5 gigabit LAN, and finally, our rather premium 8-channel S1220A audio codec from Realtek, which even if slightly aged, does a great job at providing a rich audio experience, both in gaming and other sound shenanigans, but most importantly, as an excellent recordability, mainly thanks to having both left and right audio uh, channel traced on dedicated PCB layers. Now, Overall, a very basic yet premium Bakayo. What I mean by that is that there's not much there, but when there is something, it's really the best of its category. Nonetheless, I, I do regret uh, the, the very poor connectivity of this Bakayo. The absence of a Wi-Fi adapter is really hard to explain, especially when you see how much this board costs. And uh, yes, the fact that the clear CMOS button has been placed on the motherboard instead of on the back IO, which really makes it hard to be accessed. So definitely room for improvement here. Now, front panel connector wise, well, we don't have much new here. We have our usual two second generation USB front panel connectors for monitoring, a five gigabit USB third generation front panel connector, and our 10 gigabit per second type C, all of which were fully expected at this price range. Cooling wise though, we got a rather generous eight PWM fan connectors, including two water pump, connectors, which is a first. Prime motherboards usually come with a single all-in-one water cooling uh, front panel connector. In this case, we also have a dedicated water pump connector. Great to operate not only classic uh, cooling solutions, but also some of the most complex dual loop custom water cooling uh, situations. My only concern here is that in view of the VRM overclocking limitation, is it really necessary? Not really. Now, troubleshooting wise, we have our usual first aid easy debugger here to signal the main stages of our boot, the absolute bare minimum for a motherboard which has to juggle no less than three different PCIe standards. But we also have a power soldered button, great for quick test boot uh, when you don't have a chassis, and that famous clear CMOS button I mentioned earlier, which I find awkwardly placed and would have done much more for itself and for you if placed on the back IO. Bias wise, well, there is really nothing new here. The same good old prime referenced Asus BIOS, which will feel familiar to all previous Asus users and intuitive enough for first time users. Being a Z690 chipset, the BIOS gives you all the manual freedom to adjust CPU clock ratio and precise voltage for a refined overclocking experience. Finally, this would not be an Asus motherboard without the usual RGB festing, which made us all wonder if there is nothing more than this life but this. Starting with a rather pretty bright and well-placed addressable RGB street. And I really want to note how this looks so much better than all of the previous RGB attempt 
on the previous Prime motherboards. Now, in addition, we also have our four RGB Aura connectors, three of which are addressable. In short, enough RGB to cure you from Frenchism. Now, in conclusion, at about $300 before taxes, the Prime Z690A has a 30 box premium on its predecessor. Most importantly, we can clearly see that it benefited from a noticeable improvement in terms of finish. It comes with better passive cooling components, a more coherent and pleasing aesthetics, and broad performance upgrades, which clearly breaks from any Prime we've seen before. It is clearly a product of tranquil, uh, quality, calm engineering and ready to age well. But unfortunately for the Prime Z690A, there's a harsh competition. And despite having a lot going for itself, um, I feel like Asus missed the score on a few points. The VRM, even though upgraded, falls below Alder Lake abilities. And despite being able to squeeze 90% of its overclocking potential, the VRM will be the first limit of this build and not the CPU. In addition, the Bakayo cruelly lacks of connectivity, which is almost unforgivable. But most importantly, it's pricing. I feel that the Prime Z690A is $30 too expensive. At last year MSRP, about $270, I'd be telling you run for it. But the truth is that we have motherboards like the Z690 Hours Pro, which by the way I have reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so just yet, which does cost $30 more, granted, but also brings so much more on the table. It sure is not as good looking as the Prime Z690A, but he'll give you more for your money. So in short, the Prime Z690A is an amazing everyday, versatile, stable, long lifespan motherboard. But it's really only worth it if you can find it on sale, unfortunately. And yeah, that's the truth.